Good day and welcome to another MVC screencast. Today we're going to be talking about sketching quadric surfaces. Recall that a quadric surface is a solution set to a polynomial degree 2 equation. That is an equation with x, y's, and z's where the highest power you see is 2. You can also see uh, the power 1 in these equations, um, but there's a trick called completing the square that basically can eliminate it. We're going to deal in a slightly more simple case in this example here. A couple things to notice about this example. We're going to do three of them, but of course you note that they're related. The coefficients are all the same on each of the variables with the exception of the sign. Right? That's the only thing that's varying um, uh, between these. So we'll sketch what we call contour plots for each. And we're going to match to its graph uh, in this array of three plots you see below. Notice they're qualitatively very different plots. And so it's just this kind of playing of sign that's going to dictate which is which. So that's what we look to explore. Let's look at the first example. We want to sketch a contour plot of this surface. And what that means is we're going to take one variable and fix its value and a number of different variables, and for each of those, draw the curve the remaining equation represents. Now that's a mouthful. In practicality, what it means is you pick one of your variables and you stick a number in for it, and you graph what you get. Now there's some strategy involved as to which variable to pick, but in this example, it turns out not to be such a big deal, so let's just start somewhere. We'll pick Z, and we're gonna fix it at various values of K. Now, as soon as you make that decision that z is fixed, that means all your contours are going to live in the xy plane. So let's get one set of axes down that will draw all our contours on. Now, we need to start somewhere, so let's make it easy, and we're going to set k equal to 0. And then you see we get the equation x squared plus y squared over 4 equals 1. Now, I kind of hope you would recognize this equation as an ellipse. Uh, here, but you can kind of remember that it kind of looks like a circle. We've got sum of square terms, just this coefficient's a little different here. Now, of course, there's a the standard form for an ellipse with major and minor axes and blah, 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 but I can never remember it. What I can remember is the simple fact that when you square a real number, the result is not negative. So when I look at this equation here, I see two positive terms, and I realize the right-hand side is 1. So the smallest this term can get is 0. That means the biggest x squared can get is 1. And the smallest x squared can get is 0. So y squared over 4 has to be less than or equal to 1, which of course means y can't get bigger than 2. In fact, its absolute value can't get bigger to 2. Altogether, this means we're going to get an ellipse, and we see the extreme values of our variables. y goes up to 2, and x goes up to 1, and those define our ellipse. Okay, and you notice this is a pretty imperfect looking ellipse. We don't need to be better than that. So naively, the next thing to check after 1, after 0 is 1, but when we write that, that equation, you should notice pretty closely I've got two square terms over here equals a negative. That doesn't happen. There's no solution here. Z can never get to 1. And a little examination says, oh, I certainly can't get to, uh, above that either. Um, so that's not going to work. What we do notice, back to your original equation here, is this is actually the sum of three square terms, right, times positive uh, constants here. Right? So we also see that this term here can't be bigger than 1, which sends us a nice, sets a nice bound on z. Z is not going to get... Um, bigger than 1 over the square root of 2, even in absolute value, uh, that is. So noticing that does something nice. It tells us how what other values we should look at um, for z. In fact, I'm just going to look at 3 here. And so the extreme value, of course, is 1 over root 2. And we're just going to divide in half. Now, it is a good idea when setting your traces to pick values that are evenly spaced in z, all right, because then the spacing in your plot will have some meaning if you do that. Let's take care of this extreme case. First, we get the sum of these square things is 0. Now, this equation clearly only has one solution. It's when x and y 
R is zero, so it's just the origin, as only said. And then we can notice that, as we mentioned, since z is squared in the original equation, you're going to get the exact same equation whether z is positive or negative. So we're actually going to get two for one on each of these. And then we'll get z values of the positive and negative variety with the same curve um, from our equation. So the origin there is right, the highest and lowest z gets are 1 over root 2 and minus 1 over root 2, respectively. And so let's just do this middle value here to see what that looks like. And so the constant we get on the right is 3 fourths after we do our little bit of algebra. And again, there's a standard form for ellipses, but I don't want to look at that. Again, I just want to look at these terms and realize x squared never gets below 0, so the biggest y squared could possibly be is 3. All right, so in other words, the absolute value of y is less than or equal to radical 3. Okay, that's maybe that's not the nicest number, but notice what it means for x. That x is less than radical 3 over 2, and we have the interesting relation between them, right, that the biggest y value gets is exactly twice as big as x. So it's going to have the same similar shape uh, to our outer ellipse. And so we'll plot down root 3 roughly and, and radical 3 over 2, and we'll get an ellipse like this. Right? And this is actually good enough to identify our surface. So we've got levels at, out at, at 0, and we get the widest our surface gets, right, as we move up, right, to half its height, we're at this middle ring over here, right, and then the extreme point is just here, so it's clearly steeper on the outer parts, and then it tops off at 1 over root 2, and it looks exactly symmetric um, below the xy plane, that is for negative values, z, so we're certainly ready to identify this surface here, so A is the one that's bounded in all coordinates, certainly, and we can mark it down here. It's this ellipsoid in the third position. Now for B, we see that the only changes are the minus signs in front of the y squared terms and on the right hand side. So let's work out what this uh, work with this equation here. Now we still have to make the choice of which variable it is we want to fix. And if we just go with the same one, well, you see what would happen here. It would certainly work. But taking setting z to 0, for example, so like taking away, what we're left with is an equation of a hyperbola. And it's just not something I prefer to work with if I can uh, avoid it. So instead of doing that, I'll do a little bit of algebra and move the y uh, squared term over. So let's rearrange these things here. And so now we've got the equation x squared plus 2z squared equals y squared over 4 minus 1. And I like this one because now if I set y to fixed values, I'm back to that ellipse form just in x and z uh, this time. So uh, Let's do that. I'm going to form my little chart, and I'm going to make it a little briefer here. We'll just have values of y in the first column, and then whatever the right-hand side we get for our equation in the second uh, column is just going to dictate the size of our ellipse um, here. So once we make this choice, of course, we've got the x and z plane that we're working in uh, now, and I'm drawing way too fast here. Let's back up a little bit. Uh, as we go through this. So the first uh, level we're going to look at is the extreme level of uh, plus or minus 4. Right? And so there where x squared plus 2z squared is 0. And then we just get the simple point at the origin and set its level to plus and minus 4. The same trick applies since it's y squared. We get 2 for the price of 1. Uh, so that's the extreme case. But now notice that y can be only be bigger in absolute value than 4, right? Anything less will give you no trace at all, which tells us something about this graph. All y values between negative 4 and 4 have no um, corresponding xz value, so no intersection with those planes. We could probably identify the graph already, but let's proceed with the uh, contour plot. So we'll look at 5 next. We have no real 
reason to pick a different interval why it can get as big as we want. So we'll just increase the level by one and see what happens. You know, the numbers aren't um, going to be beautiful, but we'll move on to six after that to make it a uniform distribution. And so the level for x squared plus 2z squared is 21 to 4, it's at 5.25. So it's good to have a calculator sitting around, perhaps, so that we can figure out what the extreme values of our variables are. The square root of that number, it's around 2.3 or so, and so that's as big as x gets. And it's just important to note that z is not going to get that big, right? We're going to cut that in half um, because of the 2 in front of z squared to find z's extreme values. So um, we'll have it, it's going to be a bit smaller in the z direction. And so let's approximate as best we can. 2.3, 1.3. Okay, well, that's as good an ellipse as we're going to get uh, right now. And then we're just going to move on to 6. So we're going to up the y level to plus and minus 6. So we're moving kind of out along the y-axis now to see what kind of ellipse we get. Nice, the algebra works quite a bit uh, nicer for that case. We just get plain old 8, if I did my arithmetic correctly there. Uh, and then so we know the extreme values of x squared are square root of 8, so 2 root 2, you know, around 2.8. Uh, or so, and z is even nicer. We actually get a perfect square when we solve for uh, z squared, and so z gets up to plus or minus 2. So, when we sketch that graph, what we've got are these increasing in size ellipses as we go away from the origin in the y direction. And important to note that that's what's uh, happening here, and so then it'll be easy to match that one up when we move down to the uh, guy here, which graph has that. Um, desired property, it's pretty clear, right? It's this guy uh, right here is going to be B. You notice that in between, you got this gap between the two pieces, this is called, pieces is called a hyperboloid of two sheets, right? So that corresponds to those y values between minus uh, 4 and 4, um, for which there is no solution in uh, x and z. So this guy here is B to match our A from earlier, and I know that you can do process of elimination uh, to say that this guy is going to be C, but let's just see it really quickly over here. In fact, we won't even draw the contour plot. Let's just uh, get to the good stuff of uh, analyzing this guy. So if I set Z equal to a fixed constant in this equation, I get my familiar ellipses, so I could certainly do that here, and so you can see as you kind of slice down in the z direction, you can kind of see ellipses happening here in the x and y uh, directions, right? But there's another thing to do here because there's something special that z appears as a linear term, right? It only appears, there's no z squared, it's only a z term there. So actually, if I leave z in there, I decide to fix one of these guys, let's say I fix y. Right? Then I can solve, and what I'm going to get, end up with is I'm going to get a z value is equal to a constant, right? and then another constant plus from y squared over 4. Right? It's going to get uh, more and more negative right here, and minus an x squared. Right? The x squared gets moved over to this side. So all I'm saying is that when I fix y here, what I get are parabolas facing downward in the xz plane. And, and you see that. Exactly here, fitting. If we were to cut this right, against the uh, perpendicular to the y axis, you would see these ellipses, I'm sorry, parabolas facing downward here, so it's pretty clearly um, C. As this video is getting a little long, I'm going to uh, cut it there. Um, but practice, try to observe what happens as various, as we change the signs on various variables here, and while I don't think it's worth your time to memorize which combination give you hyperboloids versus paraboloids versus ellipsoids, and so on, it's good to just be able to do the analysis of, okay, when, for what values do I get no solution, and all you really need to remember is that when you square something, it's not negative. All right, until next time.